Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me this afternoon. Today, we have 21 new positive cases of COVID-19 in Erie County to report. Yes, I said 21. When the report came to me this morning, I had to truly catch my breath. Following the 17 cases from yesterday, our contact tracers at the Erie County Department of Health have their hands full right now, as you can imagine. So we do not have the ages or the zones or other information that I normally share on these 21 cases yet. But as we've shown in the past, it's proven that this virus infects people of all ages, all races, all genders, and all locations across the county. We know that people are curious about the cases and all the information around them. Keep in mind, our goal is to promote community health and to keep you safe. We will provide the data as it becomes available and it will be and as it's helpful in preventing the spread of COVID-19 here in Erie County. As we get more cases, the staff is working long hours to save lives. We can't get stuck with what people want to know. Rather, we need to stay focused on what people need to know in order to help stop the spread of COVID-19. What's important for you to know today is that we have 21 new cases for a total of 183 cumulative positives, 3,558 negatives, and 121 recovered cases. Right now, right here, I am begging you to help us, each and every one of you. Please help us stop the spread of COVID-19 in Erie County. First, stay in place. Staying home is still the best way to stay safe and keep our community safe, even though the stay-at-home order has been lifted. Maintain your space. Keep that six-foot distance between you and anyone else who does not live in your home. Avoid going inside the homes of family and friends. Stay outside to visit. Avoid any gatherings that are more than 25 people and act as if everyone that you come in contact with is a potential carrier. Remember, many have the virus before they feel any symptoms, and some have the virus and never have symptoms. And cover your face. Wear a mask when leaving your home. Certain activities like shopping at the store, going to work, and being in public spaces all require you to wear a mask. Wear a mask when visiting your friends, even when you're outside and maintaining that six foot distance. Wear a mask to protect, protect others from the droplets that escape from your speech, your sneezing, your cough. Remember that your mask protects them, my mask protects me. Make sure your mask covers your nose, your mouth completely. Should also fit against the sides of your face and be able to be washed after each use. Some other tips, clean and dis disinfect surfaces you touch a lot in your home, your car, workplace. Common surfaces include doorknobs, refrigerator handles, stove burner knobs, microwaves, TV remotes, sink faucets, toilet handles, kitchen counters, stroller handles. Think about the places that you touch. Wash your hands often for at least 20 seconds. Sing the ABCs, happy birthday twice, whatever it is that'll get you to stay at that sink for 20 seconds. If the virus can't stick, it can't make you sick. Use hand sanitizer when not able to use soap and water, like when you go to the gas station or after you get done shopping and jump back in your car. Know what COVID-19 symptoms look like in order to protect yourself and others. The fever, cough, shortness of breath. Self-quarantine if you have these symptoms or others and you can find them listed in many places. If you think you've been exposed or to someone else who is sick, please self-quarantine. If you're feeling sick, tell your employer and stay home. If your condition gets worse, call your doctor and ask to be tested. Use curbside delivery or pickup whenever possible was while supporting our local restaurants getting your prescriptions, or picking up your groceries. Many businesses allow you to place orders online or by phone to avoid in-person shopping. 
And that brings me to today's star player, a model business who is doing things right in the light of COVID-19. Giant Eagle is doing a good job enforcing the masking policy, and they have a pandemic safety officer at the door. Their delivery service is also done very well. You can place your order online, schedule a delivery or pickup time, and pay online. A personal shopper calls you to verify any substitutions or items when they're not available. The delivery drivers are masked, and they leave the bags at your doorstep, doorstep for a non-contact drop-off. And thank you to all of our star players, those businesses who are helping us to reopen Erie County in the safest manner possible. If our numbers continue to go up, we, should, we, shall, we will not be looking at the green phase at any time soon. In fact, there's more of a chance that we would look to return to the red phase, and that is not a good scenario for our residents or our businesses. So we need you to do your part. We need your help. So please help us control the spread of COVID-19 in our community by following the guidelines I've spoken to about every day that I've been on for the last few months. And now I'd like to welcome back with us Shar Beringer, the Director of Community Health Services at the Erie County Department of Health, and certainly been on the front lines of this pandemic fight since day one. Shar? Shar, are you there? I'm sorry, I forgot to take it off of mute. Okay, thank you, Char. <laughs> thank you very much, County Executive. As we have shared, the role of contact tracing is vital to the fight against the spread of COVID-19 disease. With the number of positive cases that the county has seen in just the past two days, our current staff are working long hours. A few weeks ago, we posted per diem positions for disease investigators, or better known as contact tracers, on the county website. 16 candidates have been interviewed. One has been a quick hire, as she was a furloughed worker for the Erie County Department of Health and was already in our personnel system. Another six are in process of being notified of hire. And personnel processes are occurring for these six with a goal of start to training the first week of June. Applications are still being accepted. Interviews and hiring will continue in waves until all positions are filled. Uh, you can imagine the time that it's taking to bring 26 new positions on board, but we will accomplish it. Uh, if you have applied and meet the minimum qualifications and have not heard back from us yet, do not be concerned as this whole process will take time. To help the current contact tracers, we ask that you follow all of the safety guidelines. Only go out when you absolutely need to. Wear a mask when going out, Stay six feet away from others. Avoid gatherings of people larger than 10 and wash your hands frequently and thoroughly. Thank you. Thank you, Shar. Um, and now we'll open it up to questions for myself or Shar from the media. And today we'll start with Jet TV. Yes, hi, uh, Kathy Samir. So, of course, uh, this week it seems like we've just kind of been on the up and up, uh, seeing uh, the biggest spikes we've had in Erie. So, I guess, do you feel that we've possibly may moved prematurely, or uh, are the residents possibly just kind of throwing caution to the wind? Well, I think that we were in a good place to move to the yellow phase when we did two weeks ago. And we all, I think, knew and believed we would see an increase in cases as people began to move about our community more and started to interact with each other more. But I do believe there are um, a number of people who really just kind of thought, well, our numbers aren't that big and it's not really a concern for me. Um, and so they've gone about returning to life as we knew it prior to COVID-19. That life cannot be returned to at this point until we have a vaccine. And so we have all got to understand that the virus is still out there. The virus is looking for a host, and the next host could be you. And then uh, would Shar like to answer that as well? Well, the, the reason that we are hiring the number of contact tracers that we are hiring is because we anticipated an increase in cases with the move from red to yellow. 
So then since uh, I guess we were kind of anticipating that, should we, I guess, be nervous seeing these numbers if we were anticipating it? Shar, would you like to answer that? I certainly will. Uh, it is not good for our community to see these numbers going up. Uh, it's just so important to keep the distancing, wear the mask. That's what's really going to prevent the numbers from going up at this point. Thanks. Talk Erie. Yes, good afternoon. It's Joel Natalie. I'd like to ask a question of Shar. Do we have any data on the hospitalization rate uh, of these cases of these 183? Is it 10 percent, 20 percent more? Uh, I do not have that data available at my fingertips, no. Do you have a, just an inkling or of what it's been like? Because we're, we're following up on a on the story from yesterday from uh, uh, from the doctor that said uh, that most people get a mild case that are over it in, in seven to ten days. Certainly looking at COVID disease as a whole, that is true. Uh, we may not always know when someone is hospitalized, so there's no way that I can get accurate uh, data on that, on that specific topic. Thank you. Uh, Erie Times News. Yes, Kathy, it's David. Um, a couple things, I want to get this in line first. Governor Wolf apparently said at, on his media call earlier this afternoon, I didn't hear myself, but um, Matty O'Neill uh, sent me a text on it, that some counties actually can go from yellow to green this week. Based on the numbers we're seeing today and yesterday, is that out of the question for Erie County? Um, I don't. I have not been given any indication that we will be moving to green. I would think that with 53 cases announced uh, since Monday, um, that the state might look at us differently than they might have last week. But again, I don't have any indication uh, either way on what the state might be looking to do this week. And I did not hear that press conference myself either. And then. Um on the, on the flip side of that, obviously, you had mentioned it a little bit earlier about the concern about going from yellow to red. How many more days of numbers like this do you think it would take for us to, to have it be really like a real concern that we're going to approach that roughly 10 cases a day plateau that would put us at risk for the 50 cases per 100,000 people over two weeks? So right now, um, our number over the last 14 days, uh, really, of course, the number is the past few days being so high brings us to 32 basically and a half cases per 100,000. And we talked about that state metric of 50 cases per 100,000. And that's a number we certainly don't want to get to. But there's other parameters the state will be looking at, and that also includes hospital capacity, um, which, of course, we've done a really good job in Erie County of making sure we've never gotten anywhere close to reaching that capacity. And I think kind of going back to the last question, I just want to make sure people understand, even though many people have a mild case, um, as it spreads out for throughout the community, those who are most vulnerable and who have a greater likelihood of having a very serious case will obviously be more likely, uh, the chances of those people contracting COVID-19 will increase as more people have the disease within our community. Uh, Erie News Now. Good afternoon. A question for Shar. Could you explain the uh, the domino effect here of when those contact tracers get bogged down, of how that slows everything down, and uh, you know, just to explain the the problems that two days like this, that 17 and 21, make for those tracers, and what that means for the rest of us. Well, how many um, contacts are elicited from each confirmed case varies widely. The more contacts that people are having, the longer it's going to take to notify people and to get them into quarantine. Uh, if they are not uh, following isolation themselves because they know that they're a contact, excuse me, if they're not following quarantine because they know they're a contact to somebody and we haven't called them yet, that's just going to um, make our community more vulnerable during that time frame that we're unable to reach them. It's going to be very important that if somebody gets a call from the health department that they give us a call back so we can give them accurate and timely information. And uh, uh, how difficult is this here? We have 25 tracers and way, way more than that in terms of active cases right now. A, just for those tracers who are working ridiculous hours trying to, to keep up, but just 
realistically, is it even possible to keep up with this many cases and that many tracers? Uh, no, that is why we're hiring an additional 18, because <laughs> we recognize that uh, we cannot maintain it with the staff that we have. Our staff also needs to do the investigations of the confirmed cases. From there, we elicit the contacts. So our staff needs to focus on doing the investigations of the confirmed cases, and then we're bringing in the additional staff to help support the contact tracing that are identified through the confirmed cases. And is there any plans for, for how to, to bridge that gap over the next uh, nine or 10 days as you wait for those tracers to come on board? Um, or is it basically, here's what we have right now and we've just got to get till then? Uh, we've got to get through till then. Uh, this is our job. Th thank you. Um, we'll go back to uh, Jet TV. Yep, hi, Samir again. Uh, so I'll just stick with Char for a little bit right now. So. With these contact tracers, of course, uh, seeing these high numbers, uh, we know they're super busy, and uh, we weren't able to get the zones or ages today. So I guess what happens as uh, I, those cases just wait? Is it just whenever you get the contact tracers get to them, they get to them? What is that process? Uh, right now, we believe we will still be able to contact confirmed cases within 24 hours. That generates the list of contacts. We will do our best to contact them also within 24 hours at this point in time. Again, it depends how many contacts get elicited. Uh, if we only have one contact, uh, because people have basically been staying at home, uh, only going out when they need to, social distancing, wearing masks, and we only have one close contact, that's a lot easier investigation than someone who has been out and about. And uh, our highest number of contacts from one case so far is 29. And it's a little tough to predict how many we're going to get with any particular case until we actually speak with them. Thanks. Thank you. Um, talk, Erie? Yes, I, another question for Shar. Uh, this morning on the Today Show, they did a feature on using librarians across the country as contact tracers. Uh, has that been considered here in Erie County? Uh, we have actually preferred persons per our um, job posting with more of a science background. Uh, I, kudos to our retired nurses and our school nurses. A lot of them are responding. Uh, that is the, the preference for us. It's just a little bit easier to, a um, little bit easier for the training. Great, thank you. One of the things I will mention about our library staff is we have used them to do research um, actually for the last couple months and that has been hugely helpful as as different people on the team need some research done we've had library staff uh, use their great skills to help us in that area for on the fight um, Erie Times News David uh, yes Kathy actually this question is for Shar. hey Shar, um I know that you're still trying to contact trace most of these cases from today and late yesterday but is there any evidence of any clusters, any any real connect, connectivity either among the 21 today or the 17 yesterday? Um, it's really a mixed bag, David. Um, some are connected, but some are not. I can't give you a hard number, but in our general discussion about what has come in today, uh, the, both categories apply. And nothing about any really big groups of gatherings like we had heard about over the weekend that resulted in a, in a, in a fairly significant number of cases? Not that I am aware of. Thanks. Erie News Now. Ethan. Question for both of you. Um, obviously, we expected something of a spike going into the yellow phase, but did you expect to see this? 17 and then 21. Um, you know, so was that expected? And then uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, where's your level of concern right now? Shar, you want to go uh, first? I'll take this first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is not unexpected. And I am getting very concerned. <laughs> um, and for me, I, I guess I was, uh, I have to say, 17 yesterday and 21 today, both days um, have been a bit of a shock when I heard the numbers. Uh, 13 on Monday, not so much. It was over a few different days. Um, we knew the numbers were going to go up. But these last two days, uh, true, 
truthfully, I did not expect, but again, I'm not in the midst of it as Shar is every day, but I didn't expect these numbers quite so high. Um, and I also am getting extremely concerned that if we continue to see this trend um, going up, we're going to have a real um, difficult situation on our hands in terms of trying to control COVID-19 in our community. And, and Shar, did you say this was not unexpected, that, that this, you, you, you expected this, in other words? Uh, from an epidemiology viewpoint, I am not surprised, correct. Okay. Um, could you make the link then for me of if this isn't a surprise, why then still uh, concerned? Because there's this much more disease in our community, and we know that with every confirmed case out there, there's going to be more and more contacts to those cases. So that Thanks. just means more and more disease. <laughs> And uh, last questions here, Jet TV, Samir. Yep. Hi, Kathy. Uh, so, uh, Governor Tom Wolf announced today that Friday could be the day he announces the first counties to move into the green phase. Of course, you know, no, uh, you're not really wanting to speak about that yet. But I mean, has there been any discussion between uh, you and the governor's administration about that? My discussion has been, you know, what are the guidelines for going into green? What is the uh, what are the parameters for going into green and and um, if he's making an announcement tomorrow, we still haven't seen anything. So um, none of us have seen what, what green is supposed to look like. So that's all I can say. I, I have no idea. Uh, just to uh, clarify, I guess, so they haven't, uh, I guess, released to you any of the guidelines or anything uh, along that? No, they have not. So then whenever, uh, prior to moving into the yellow phase, were they, I guess, a little bit more open about it to where you could kind of draw the conclusion that Erie County was going to be part of that first phase? Well, we had some early on um, basic parameters around yellow. And um, but again, uh, sometimes these announcements have been made uh, very quickly and we've had to try to respond to those announcements as quick as we can. And I have to say the team's done a really good job of that. But it's difficult when you aren't given a sort of a heads up or any kind of a idea that this is what uh, is going to happen or this is what you're trying to achieve you know when we went to yellow when they said we were going to yellow phase we needed a lot of different guidance on specific businesses and it took quite a while to get some of the guidance that we needed as you all know because you were asking me about it and I was trying to give you what I knew at the time as soon as I knew it but um, you know those are the kind of things and we don't even know in green does everybody open um, if they don't open, what does that look like? If they are opening, are there limits on the openings of the businesses that aren't open right now? Uh, those are the kind of things that particularly our environmental team needs to know because we've been there all along as a partner with our businesses, helping them figure this out. And so we um, would hope that we would get clear guidance for the green phase uh, once that's announced by the, by the state. And then just a really quick follow-up, uh, if I could get both you and Shar to answer, would you be surprised if we were announced? Shar? To enter the green phase. Would you want I, I would be surprised if we're announced, considering that cases are going up and we have not bolstered contact tracers at this point, I would be surprised if we would move to green at this point. I would be in agreement with that, looking at the numbers that we've had this week. And again, we're looking at June 1st for having our first uh, new contact tracers being on board. We really need uh, to have those people on board to make sure we can handle any even greater numbers that we might see if we would go to the green phase. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Talk Erie, any final questions? Sure, just, just one to throw out there. Uh, I did a little study of the statewide cases per 100,000 population over the last 14 days and it's running about 97 cases per 100,000. We're running, uh, like you said, around 30. Uh, care to comment about that? We still have a lot less COVID here than the rest of the state. You're looking at the entire state. So you're adding in Montgomery, Philadelphia, Monroe, Bucks, all, all those counties that have over a thousand cases, uh, sometimes over tens of thousands of cases, put Philadelphia in there. So uh, I don't think it's a comparison of apples to apples when you're looking at that. I think it's much better to take the county data. Um, and as you know, we, uh, we, I asked for the stay at home order when we only had a few cases 
and all the other counties were going to stay home or already at 40 some cases and above. And I truly believe that was the decision that really helped Erie County keep our cases low, really helped to keep people out of the hospital in our communities and, and helped us to be in a much better situation that we are today. There was an article in, I think, uh, maybe the New York Times this morning talking about how if we had shut down the whole country one week earlier, it was well over 30,000 people's lives could have been saved. And uh, those, are, those are lives of people that other people love and people that were doing great things in our communities. And so that's what this is about. It's about saving lives. And um, we're doing the right thing here in Erie County and we continue to do the right thing. And I'm really proud of Erie County's work and I can't compare us to the rest of the state. We have to just look at our own county and our own numbers, I think, at this point. Do you know how well we're doing against the other counties? Uh, we were at, a, at like a 30, 30th in ranking. Uh, are we still kind of that low, you think? Uh, 27. I, can't, I, I checked that out today just to see. We're now at 27. Um, so we've dipped down a few, obviously. Uh, but I'm still um, very hopeful that we can stay uh, much better off than other counties. But I would hate to see these numbers. If these numbers continued on in the trajectory that they're at, um, again, that would be very, very very concerning. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Erie Times News, any final questions? Um, yes, Kathy, you had just mentioned that you, you, you were um, remembering about how you asked for the stay-at-home order for Erie County. Are you thinking, and I know you're just hearing about the governor's decision tomorrow to, to, that perhaps some counties are going to go green, are you thinking about contacting the state and saying, not us if you're considering us based on our numbers for the last two days? You know, I have to confer with my team of, uh, at the health department, uh, Director Lyon and Char Beringer and the ep epidemiology team there. And um, we would do this as a, uh, a joint decision because I need to really look to the experts here in Erie County to help me make these kind of decisions. So, um, you know, again, I had not heard that the governor was potentially going to announce tomorrow about um, counties going to green. So we'll be discussing that. And then I just want to finish up. We have Memorial Day weekend coming up, and with all these numbers, it, maybe it's a good time if I can ask you, you know, if folks are going to gather together, what precautions, and then Kathy, this is for you or for Shar, um, what precautions do they need to make? Because it sounds like people are still confused, even after all these weeks, about keeping six feet distant when you're outside, wearing masks, doing both of those, what number of people can be together. If you're going to gather with folks outside, what are the precautions you need to take? Shar, do you want to take this one first? Oh, I sure will. Uh, first off, do not have large gatherings with people outside of your household. That's first and foremost. Uh, if you're going to have a large gathering or even you know, a gathering of, of 15 people, the six-foot distance is because we know that you need to be at least that far away for the virus to not spread from person to person. Wearing the mask does help control that. So between the distance and the mask, those are really the two core things that are going to prevent spread of the virus. So maybe this is an easy one for people to remember. Stay in place, maintain your space, and cover your face. Those are all very important. And if people would do those things as much as they can, especially maintaining your space and covering your face, those would be huge in helping to assist us in the fight against COVID-19. Is that where people are kind of dropping the ball a little bit is when they're outside, they think it's one or the other. It's the, it's the six feet apart or it's the mask when it should be both. I think that's definitely part of it, but I also think that there's a lot of people who aren't doing either one of them. And um, so they're just going into people's houses, uh, you know, hanging out with each other, um, you know, I was walking last night down along the bayfront, and I noticed numbers of people, not over 10, but, you know, three, four, five, six people together in a clump, and um, nobody wearing masks, and just, you know, they didn't look like they were all related to each other. Maybe they are, but they look more like just friends kind of uh, being together. Um, and those are the things that are happening. So I was like, well, my friend doesn't have it, I'm sure. So. We can just hang out and not wear masks and not worry about this. So that's, that's what's happening. But we know 25% of the people, at least, don't have any symptoms. And those are the people that can spread it, not 
on purpose, but unknowingly, and that's where the issue really is, is that before you get symptoms, you can be very contagious and spread it, and then there's those people who are asymptomatic who spread it. Thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, and we'll finish up with Erie News now. Do you have any final questions, Ethan? One last one for Shar, please. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding, of course, that no one has a crystal ball and nobody knows exactly what this virus is going to do, but you can make sound scientific predictions. Um, what do you think realistically five to seven, maybe ten days will, will look like here? What, what, what's the next handful of days realistically looking like potentially for Erie County? Knowing that this is Memorial Day weekend, and the weather is supposed to be gorgeous, I expect higher numbers next week. Um, how much higher? What, uh, what, what do you think, uh, give me a ballpark of what you think we will see next week? I, Ethan, I've given up a long time ago trying to put numbers on a virus. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Can't, can't blame you for that. Thanks. <sighs> Shar is a wise woman who's been involved in virus uh, movement in our community for uh, probably decades. And I want to thank her for coming and bringing her expertise uh, on today. She's always somebody I can turn to to uh, ask these really important questions to. So thank you, Shar, for being with us. And just um, to finish up here, I'm going to give you some of the other numbers that I normally do, and that's regarding the state and our other counties. The state is now reporting 65,392 total cases and 4,869 deaths. Crawford County with 21 cases. McKean has 11 cases and one death. Venango has eight cases, and Warren now has three cases. Chautauqua County, 57 cases and four deaths. And Ashtabula County, 250 cases, 28 deaths. So as you can see, COVID-19 exists all around us and certainly exists here in Erie County. So please, everyone, stay as close to home as you can. Please stay safe by wearing your mask and six feet apart from those you don't live with. And please, throughout all of this, remain calm. Thank you.